Coming up on the two minute mark on the count. T minus two minutes and counting. Stages are either pressurizing or pressurized as we are still go for the launch of the Tethys-1 interplanetary communication satellite aboard the Saturn 1H rocket. All is still good as we're coming up on T minus 90 seconds and counting. We're still a go at T minus 90 seconds. Third stage tanks now pressurized as the automatic sequence continues. And we're now T minus 1 minute and 15 seconds and counting on this, the first regular launch of the Saturn 1H rocket, uh, the previous two being demonstration launches. T minus 60 seconds. We've now gone internal power with the launch vehicle. We are on internal batteries. Coming up on the 30 second mark. T minus 30 seconds and counting. 25 seconds and counting. We are still proceeding. T minus 20. We have guidance internal. Ten, nine, eight, ignition sequence start. Five, four, three, two, one, all engines lit. And we have liftoff. We have liftoff at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The tower is clear and we are good. The Tethys-1 is on its way to a 12-hour orbit. The semi-synchronous orbit for the Tethys-1 rocket. The Tethys-1 satellite here. Thirty seconds after liftoff, the rocket is 1,800 meters in altitude, 133 meters per second. T plus 55 seconds, 6,900 meters in altitude as we see booster separation. There we are. Uh, a little bit of roll as with the previous mission with this fairing, uh, the Mimus 1 probe. Still haven't resolved that issue. However, the larger fairing does seem to fix that problem. This is heavier than the Mimus 1 probe because of the large dish and the power requirements. That this one continuing on. T plus one minute and 40 seconds. The vehicle seems to be stabilizing at this point. As we come close to the two minute mark and everything shows nominal. T plus 2 minutes, 31 kilometers in altitude, 608 meters per second in ground speed. The Saturn 1H is on a normal trajectory. Two minutes, 25 seconds after launch, we have 43 kilometers, 216 meters per second as the first stage is now providing ample thrust, getting the ground speed of the vehicle to its necessary velocity. We can't see it from this view, but the payload fairings should have dropped at this point. There they are, falling away. 
we should be able to get the payload camera online. Look forward to getting the views from that. Ah, there we go. Okay, 3 minutes and 15 seconds into the flight, we are at a 72 kilometer altitude, 1,672 meters per second in speed. As we see Florida receding from us, thanks to the AeroCam on the Tethys 1 payload. We're approaching first stage burnout. That's first stage separated and second stage lit. Second stage looks nominal. And we are T plus 4 minutes and 10 seconds, 132 kilometers in altitude, 2,800 meters per second in speed. The next launch for the EDB will be the first for the Saturn 9 rocket. The Saturn 9 rockets uh, derive from the Saturn series of rockets using an F1 engine in its first stage, a J-2 engine in its second stage, and it will be launching the Dion-1 interplanetary probe, which is the partner of the Tethys-1. The Tethys-1's main duty will be to communicate with the Dion-1 series of interplanetary probes. The Saturn-9 is reputedly much more stable than the Saturn-1H, and is designed for manned missions. It can carry 20 tons into low Earth orbit, and has a max G of 4.4 on launch. It's an expensive launcher, however the Dion-1 itself is approximately the same cost. The Dion-1 has a price tag of $220 million and uh, that's largely because of its uh, innovative ion engine and numerous scientific instruments. 5 minutes and 40 seconds into the launch, we are at 196 kilometers in altitude, 3,786 meters per second in speed. As the Tethys-1 continues on its way aboard the Saturn 1H rocket to semi-synchronous orbit. There are two versions of the Saturn 9 rocket. There is the standard version and the Saturn 9A, which has a larger payload fairing. The larger payload fairing also comes with a larger second stage. Uh, but the larger second stage is not larger in mass, it's simply larger in, in diameter. The Saturn 9A specializes in launching station building missions, and we have two of those scheduled for the EDB. The first is the first module of the Titan Station, and then that will be followed by the second module of the Titan Station. And so those will follow the Dion 1 mission. Up to this point, the Tethys 1 has been using its Reflectron DP 10 to communicate with Mission Control. However, it will soon switch over to its AIES Comtech CL 1 dish which will then maintain communication through the MIMAS-1 geosynchronous satellite. The goal of the Saturn 1H at this point is to put the Tethys-1 into an elongated orbit, an eccentric orbit, with a high apoapsis but a periapsis just above the atmosphere. It will not be sufficient to keep the periapsis in the atmosphere. We would like to see that at a minimum of 200 kilometers and an apoapsis minimum of 10,000 kilometers. Okay, the second stage of the Saturn 1H is continuing to hold up well. And getting ready for burnout. 
Second stage is burned down. And now the third stage is lit. Third stage is lit. And the Saturn 1H will continue. 8 minutes and 15 seconds into the launch. We are at 326 kilometers, 5,995 meters per second. Communication is now through MIMAS-1 as we see or will see the switch out of the launch program. There you are, out of the launch program and into the orbit optimization program. There is some nervousness about launching an expensive payload atop the Saturn 9 rocket on its first launch. However, Werner von Kermann assures us that it is his masterpiece and that it will work. And since he has a remarkable track record with his rockets, uh, we can only assume that, that he knows what he's doing. The EDB, of course, plans to ensure the costs of the payloads and payment on the Tethys-1 and Dion-1 are coupled so that there will be no payment for this mission this Tethys-1 mission unless the Dion-1 is also successful. Success for the Dion-1 will be simply delivering it to low Earth orbit. Its subsequent interplanetary missions will be the business of its operators. The Dion-1 incidentally has a 24-hour burn time. It has uh, 24,000 meters per second of Delta V but it takes a substantial amount of time to actually burn those 24,000 meters per second. So you will forgive us if we do not bring you the details of those burns. However, because the Dion-1 is substantially lighter than the design mass limit of the Saturn 9 rocket, the design mass limit being 20 tons to low Earth orbit, the third stage of the Saturn 9 rocket will remain with the Dion-1 in order to boost it to a highly eccentric orbit in preparation for its first interplanetary transfer. And we will be able to bring you that once it's planned out. Because of the expense of the Dion-1, however, it will remain in low Earth orbit for a number of days before setting out on its interplanetary journey. And uh, possibly weeks, depending on the decision made by the operators of the probe. We are 11 minutes and 10 seconds into the launch. We are at 500 kilometers in altitude, 7,760 meters per second. third stage has approximately 30 seconds, 35 seconds left in its burn. Waiting for third stage burnout here and the resulting orbit from that. Okay, third stage burnout, a little bit longer than expected, and and the telemetry is altitude, approaching 600 kilometers, velocity 8,576 meters per second, and our apoapsis is 11,148 kilometers, periapsis 307,000, uh, 307 kilometers. 307 kilometers on the periapsis. So, a successful launch for the Saturn 1H as the payload has separated from its fairing. And we'll soon await the lighting of its own 1 kilonewton thrusters, which will push it to its intended apoapsis.
and then following that it will also do a burn at that apoapsis in order to circularize at an uh, orbital period of 12 hours. The altitude at that point will be 20,200 kilometers. Tethys 1 is free of the third stage. Waiting for signal. Okay, again waiting for engine light as everything is checked out. Tethys 1's thrusters are lit and it will proceed on to its destination of 20,200 and approximately 66 kilometers in altitude. We're back with you here as we have been promised a beautiful view of the planet of Earth as the Tethys-1 passes over northwestern Africa there. We're back with Tethys-1 as it approaches the end of its circularization burn. Final adjustments will be made with RCS thrusters, and we'll look to see those fire. There you go. And the Tethys 1 is confirmed to be in a 12 hour orbit around the planet Earth. And just one thing left to do, I think, is to see if we can get a view from, from the Tethys-1 of Earth. I wonder sometimes if Jebediah Kerman is personally in charge of controlling this camera. Can we see Earth? It's possible that the satellite might need to rotate in order to... Ah, uh, there we go. It will rotate now to give us a view of the planet. There it is. Earth from 20,000 kilometers. Satellite seems to have a little bit of trouble stabilizing. There we go. All right, and with that view, I think it is time to sign off here. Tethys-1 in position, another successful mission for the Elegant Design Bureau. And, of course, next time we'll bring you the partner of the Tethys-1, the Dion-1 probe. And that should be launched next week. And the schedule is for a Wednesday launch, like this one. And so do tune in for that. We hope you enjoyed watching this launch of the Tethys-1 aboard the Saturn-1H rocket. And... With that, the Elegant Design Bureau will be signing off.